Let's talk a little bit about phase two from NASM's optimum performance training model. It's titled Strength Endurance. When you look at the current NASM five phase model that can be found at the uh, Essentials of Personal Fitness Training, uh, NASM uh, is latest edition, their third edition of the Personal Fitness Training textbook. Uh, strength Endurance is the primary adaptation that we're after, and the way that that is achieved is through supersets or back-to-back -back exercises uh, for the same muscle group. We're doing this between 70 and 80 percent of, an, of a client, patient, or athlete's estimated one rep max. We're doing between eight to 12 repetitions of each superset, resting. No, there's no rest in between each half of the superset, and there's a one minute rest afterwards. There, is a, there are a myriad of benefits that can be achieved through this type of training. The tempo, uh, let's go back to the tempo. The tempo during the first half of the superset is 202, the second half is uh, 421 or 321. We're developing strength endurance, we're improving uh, the integrity of the muscular tennis junction, increasing the strength and the density of the ligaments, improving bone density, all the time under tension that we're having is doing a tremendous amount of work. In low volumes, two or three sets, of well, one, you know, one or two sets, especially done in a circuit with integrated cardio, is excellent for weight loss, is a great metabolic demand. When we get up into higher sets, or you know, three or four times around, or four or five times around, depending on the split that you're doing, even up to six if it's a body part split, the higher levels of volume can help promote hypertrophy. This is a very easy phase to apply for the gym goer because they're doing an exercise that they uh, see with machines or free weights as the first part of the superset. It's a more of a stable based exercise where they're supported, their body doesn't have to provide as much intrinsic support. Uh, we're working on larger type 1 muscle fibers, we're doing 8 to 12 reps at a 202 tempo. So two seconds for the lengthening, there would be no isometric hold or just a brief pause and then two second shortening. So if I'm talking about a chest press, I'd lower the bar down 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, just to kind of re, uh, control myself at the bottom and back up 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. So 2, 0, 2 tempo for 8 to 12 reps. And then with the superset, we go to another exercise. This back half of the exercise is going to be more of a stabilization style of exercise, one that's going to require my intrinsic stabilizers to do more of the work as opposed to a machine or a barbell. So I might do like a hands on the ball push up. The tempo on this side of it is going to be a 4-2-1 or a 3-2-1 where I'm lengthening for 4 seconds, holding for 2 seconds, and then shortening concentric for 1 second. So if I was doing a push up with hands on the ball, I'd be lowering for 4, 3, 2, 1, hold, 2, up. There's a tremendous amount of volume. So we're doing 8 to 12 reps of the first part of the superset, 8 to 12 reps for the second part of the superset. And when you look at the time under tension here, this can be up to two minutes just for one superset if you follow the acute variables well. And that's going to be the big thing here, is many people will tend to go too fast on both sides of the superset. If you follow the 2 0 do tempo for strength, and then the 3 two, one or 4 two, one for the stabilization side, if you're going to end up close to a two minute set in time under tension, that is much more than most people are used to. So you only need about two or three sets. Most people go way too fast and they do a whole bunch of sets their time under tension is still small. But if you go slowly and control this, you only need a few sets for the supersets to get that same volume, if not more. Uh, let's cover the rest. So the back-to-back -back exercise is strength followed by stability. There's no rest in between. doesn't mean you sprint across the gym floor to get where you need to go, hopefully have it nearby. But we want to minimize that rest. So it's almost none. It's nil. And then after that superset is completed, we're going to rest approximately 60 seconds before we go back and address that muscle group again. You can perform this type of program in a total body uh, program where you're moving down total body to chest, uh, to back, to shoulders, to biceps, to tries, to legs if you want. Uh, you can arrange this in more of a horizontal loading program where you do a superset of chest, rest for a minute. Do a superset of chest, rest for a minute. Do a superset of chest, rest for a minute. And then you move down to back where you do a superset of back, rest for a minute. Superset of back, rest for a minute. So you're moving horizontally across the template. You can also do this in a vertically loaded manner. So if we think about a template that NESM has designed for the, this type of program, do a total body exercise, rest for one minute, do a chest exercise, rest for one minute, do a back exercise, rest for one minute, and complete that down through the, temp the template, whatever muscles you're going to uh, work that day in that resistance training section. You can also do this in a circuit manner. We do a total body exercise, go right to a chest exercise, go right to a back exercise, go right to a shoulder exercise, again, all the way down to the template. You can do a rest once you've completed all the body parts, or give the client a drink of water, or integrate some cardio in there if you like, and come right back up and around and complete that again. You can also break this up into what's called the per peripheral heart action circuit, 
where we would be doing back-to-back -back, uh, supersets. So supersets, back-to-back -back exercise for the same muscle group, uh, according to the NASM text that we're using here. But we'd use two, per two super, so supersets, so chest, strength level, chest stabilization level, and then we go to a lower body exercise. So we might even do like a squat to row, and then a single leg squat, or a, a barbell squat, more of a stable exercise, or a leg press followed by a single leg squat. And then we could go to back, where we could do a seated row followed by a split stance, one arm cable row. And then we could go back to lower body, where we could do a um, barbell squat followed by a single leg remaining deadlift. So the peripheral heart action circuit is going to alternate upper and lower body exercises. It's going to help with the um, flow of blood through the body and help the clients become more efficient at transporting blood from one end of the body to the other, which uh, last time I checked, most people don't have um, the best circulation. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it can be pretty challenging. So the peripheral heart action circuit is just a variation of endless counts of circuits that we can use in this model as well. And of course, within each of the phases of NASM's OPT model, all the components of the workout have slightly different guidelines. So there's uh, the warm-up and flexibility, core training, balance training, reactive training, optional speed, agility, and quickness, resistance training, and then the cool down. What we're talking about right here is just uh, is just more so the resistance training. But what it looks like and how you can recognize this, set this uh, phase visually is back-to-back -back exercises for the same muscle group, strength-based exercise first, stabilization-based exercise second, rest for approximately one minute, and then go back at it. The, the great thing about this is you don't need uh, a lot of equipment. You can be very creative in what you're doing. You can get all types of uh, clients involved with this level. There's a lot of flexibility with this program. You can follow the templates or just kind of have a, a chocolate and vanilla approach to it and still get some excellent benefits or you can become be very creative with your programming as well. So once someone has already established some stabilization endurance, it's taken them approximately four weeks to achieve that adaptation, maybe up to 12, uh, maybe as short as two. They would spend anywhere between two to 12 weeks in this phase. The average is going to be about four weeks to allow for that neuromuscular adaptation to happen. And what's gonna drive that is someone's uh, exercise experience, their compliance to the program, nutritional habits, their sleep, their hydration, uh, their supplementation, uh, their age, this, their genetic predisposition to recover and or adapt, all those things go into it. So it could be two weeks that they need to achieve some of these adaptations. It could be up to 12. Um, we'll just go ahead and put that approximation of about four weeks in each phase you can go ahead and tell just by watching someone's technique to see how well they've adapted to the 8 to 12 repetitions in the strength half of the superset and the 8 to 12 reps in the stabilization half of the superset. See if they can go ahead and challenge themselves by either adding more weight in the first half of the superset and challenge themselves in the stabilization back half of the superset by increasing proprioceptive demands or shortening a base of support, closing one eye, using um, a labile surface or, uh, you know, proprioceptive modality, basically a balanced toy, but for most people, picking a foot up or changing their stance is going to be plenty, changing your planes of motion. Those things, when we throw them at the client, patient, or athlete, and they adapt to them, they learn them, and then they're challenged by a new stimulus that we give them, and then they can repeat it again, then we know it can be time to move them on. We've adjusted their stimulus, not just by adding weight every time and not just by moving foot position every time, but when we put both of them together a couple of times and they adapt to them, it might be ready for us to be able to move them on. So about eight and a half minutes in, I want to keep this on the shorter side. Uh, it's a bit of a review on the Phase 2 Strength Endurance Training Program from NASM's OPT model. Uh, their textbook that most of you that are watching this are probably going to have, uh, NASM's uh, Introduction to Personal Fitness Training. Uh, the third edition is going to be a great resource for more information on this programming. You can also go to nasm.org or even hfpn.org for more information and education from NASM. Thanks for watching. I'm Eric Beard. Have a great day.